Hello everyone and welcome back to Animation Pilgrimage, the show where Whitney and I take a look at every single theatrically released animated film in chronological order. Or at least they would be in chronological order if we could find them at the appropriate time. Sometimes we can't, so We're then we have to, to go back. We're going back to an episode again. Yeah. <laughs> We're here so in... this is 1946. Yes. So very early on. This is very the same early. year that Fun and Fancy Free and the one about Br'er Rabbit. Song of the South. Song of the South. Thank you, Les. Those are the other two <laughs> movies that came out this same year. Okay. But this one is from Denmark. This is the first movie from Denmark we've seen. Mm -hmm. Heck, it might still be the only Denmark movie we've seen, even to the point where we currently are. Well, I can tell you that this is actually the very first Danish animated film and the very first traditionally animated film from Europe. Oh, well, sweet. This is a... On its Wikipedia page and other things that talk about it, it's like, it's the first European animated film. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> uh, no, that is untrue. That is untrue. Because but, we've seen at least two others. Yeah, like we've at least seen um, Ahmed and Reynold the Fox. Yeah, The Tale of the Fox or whatever And then there's been a couple of... Russian, Russian or Soviet films. Union or... And because yeah. it's Russia, I'm never quite sure how to classify if it's... Europe or Asia. Eurasia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know how that works out. But it is not the first animated film. It's the first traditionally animated film. And the next one that'll come after this, I believe that at least we've watched, is The Singing Princess in 1949. Okay. From Italy. Well, uh, the reason that we were able to watch this is because Bored Artist found it for us. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. You found many films for us, and this is just the latest in that line. And, um... Ready to get into a synopsis of yeah, this one? Yeah, let, let's talk about what The Tinderbox, which is the name of the movie. I don't know if we actually said that. Oh, yeah. The Tinderbox. What is The Tinderbox? Go for it. So, there is an old man looking out at the stars, and he reads the stars and sees a vision that the princess is going to marry a common soldier, which is obviously a big no-no, as oh, we all know. how horrible! So he tells the king, and the king immediately locks his daughter in a tower and doesn't allow her to go anywhere, because, you know, that seems like the appropriate response to visions in the stars, is locking your daughter away in a tower forever. <sighs> anyway. So then we cut to... This common soldier, who mm -hmm. is the main character of our story. And he comes across an old witch hanging out in front of a big old rotten tree. And she's like, hey, go into this tree for me. And uh, you you'll find treasure. You'll get as much money as you can carry. All I need you to do is bring me back one tinderbox, please. And he's like, yeah, okay. So he does it. And he has to use an apron from the witch to convince these dogs to hop off of the treasure chests and he can get a whole bunch of money out of the chests. So there's a small dog that's guarding copper, a medium dog that's guarding silver, and a gigantic dog guarding gold. Which just makes me question, why wouldn't you ditch the copper and silver you had and just pick up more gold? Yeah, why not just go for full-on gold the whole way? Like, leg? it's not like he's, like, like he only gets a handful. It's literally as much as he can carry. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you'd just be like, oh, this is just better. And you would just like get rid of the copper and silver to carry more gold. Whatever. He's a silly man. He is a very silly man. So he gets all that and he grabs the tinderbox and he goes back out and he's like, so what? He almost forgets the tinderbox. Yeah, he box. almost forgets the tinderbox because he like... he's a great guy. Oh, <laughs> he sucks. Okay, like he... He goes in there, takes the treasure wrong. As a pirate, I am offended at his <laughs> poor treasure taking. Uh, and then, like, he made a promise to this lady 
And he's like, all right, let me out. And she's like, did you get my Tinder box? And he's like, oh, sorry, I forgot. I almost thought he was going to lie about it and be like, uh, yeah, totally. And But he he didn't. He goes back in and he gets it. And then yeah. it's all good. So he pulls him, he gets pulled back out. And he's like, so what's so important about this Tinder box? And she's like, nothing. And he's like, sure. And then he lops off her head. No, no, no. He says, you better tell me or I'm going to lop off your head. And she's like, no. And so then he just kills her. Yeah. Main character, everybody. <laughs> like, yeah, Steals dude. a bunch of treasure from an evil witch, then kills her and takes I mean, her thing. He didn't steal a treasure from her. It's true. It's just she was there and wanting help to I get... I guess the tinderbox is her treasure, mm -hmm. so yeah. So he takes the tinderbox, not knowing what it is, and all of his money. Mm-hmm. And so he goes to the town, which happens to be the town where this special princess lives, and... Now he's just rolling in money, so he gets new clothes, he goes out drinking and gambling and, like, seeing the sights, and everybody loves him. Did and I then... mention this guy sucks? Like, I almost thought there was going to be a, like, a new, like, bad at new money message, but no, this guy is bad with money, and he gets, he's, he, he loses wastes all of it. All of it. Just in, like, on... two days. Yeah. And, like, he had enough money there that he should have presumably been fine for a very long time if he had like just spent it on what he needs and not just like literally gamble it away yes because he literally gambles it away mm -hmm. and then he's like well i'm out of money what will i do now all right this tinder box and then like a ghost head of the witch is like strike the tinder box <laughs> and so he does and the the smallest dog appears because that's what it does it makes the dogs appear and they will serve him because he is their master and they will do whatever he wants. So he has the dog get him more money. And then he goes back he to his high so... life. Okay, again, as a pirate, I am upset. He is so bad at making wishes. <laughs> so he just gets more money. And then he's like... He Wait. just asks the dog for, go get me some money. And I'm like, dude, 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 have you never, ever seen... A wishing story. You gotta be precise in your wording. Luckily, these dogs do not take advantage of his wishy-washy wording. No, they do exactly what he wants every single time. Yeah. Because that's the thing. If he strikes it once, he gets the smallest dog. If he strikes it twice, he gets the medium dog. If he strikes it three times in a row, he gets the gigantic dog. I don't know why you'd ever want the medium dog. Yeah, if you want, like, either you want the small one to do small things, or the gigantic one to, I don't know, terrify or kill people. What use is the, the medium dog? I don't know. Either way, he's like, hey, I heard there's a really pretty princess. I want to see her. So, small dog, go kidnap the princess for me. Bring her here. <laughs> and so this dog does, and she's asleep, and he's like, oh my god, she's beautiful. And then he picks her up, and he kisses her. story our hero everyone kidnapping women and uh, kissing them while they're asleep now obviously when because this is based off a of hans christian anderson story mm -hmm. obviously when it was written like this kind of storytelling would not like people wouldn't blink an eye at it mm -hmm. and even for like 1946 it's probably fine but, like... You just think about it and you're like... Wait a second. These are bad sensibilities to be instilling in anyone. <laughs> it's, just, it's, a, it's aged very poorly, and I can't help but think that even by 1946, they probably should have had enough foresight to be like... Rewrite maybe this maybe a little bit? we should rewrite this a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, the next day, she's like... Man, I had this weird dream where there was a pretty man and he kissed me and I was in some place that wasn't my tower. And so her dad is like, uh, uh no. And so then there's like a witch hunt or a soldier hunt, I guess. <laughs> And yeah, the this, witch is already dead. Yeah, this goes on for a few days where every night the princess gets whisked away and then the grandma or the queen try to follow him back follow the dog back and the queen is eventually successful with the trail of salt well or sugar or something the dog 
keeps doing things to help out, even though, like, the, the soldier guy doesn't know anything about this. Like, the dog is just very helpful and is, like, thwarting their schemes to find them. Mm -hmm. So eventually, yeah, they tie a bag of salt or sugar or whatever to the princess's neck so that when the dog whisks her away, it leaves a trail of white powder mm -hmm. behind. Yeah. And so they're able to follow him and capture him. By this point, the princess was fully aware of the guy courting her and they were like actually hanging out and presumably having a good relationship after the whole kidnapping part. Who knows? We never get to find out. You just see him kiss a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the soldier is captured by the king and they're like, all right, hanging you're going to die by hanging now. And so on the thing, he's like, hey, can you like... I need a last request. Last request. I want to smoke one my more... Pipe my once. pipe one last time. And the king's like, yeah, okay. And so he pulls out his pipe and then he pulls out the tinderbox and he strikes it one, two, three times, summons all three dogs, and he's like, hey, stop my execution. So the dogs <laughs> throw everyone in a pond. Huh. Okay. Like, he just beats the crap out of the king and all of his servants and coerces them into, hey, I'm marrying her now. And so they do. I... And that's where the movie ends. This guy is so, like, so bad at making wishes. So bad at making wishes. Like, yeah, he gets what he wants. But I just, I can't help but think of all the ways that this could have gone wrong and just, like... Just something as vague as stop my execution. It's like, okay, we stopped it for now. But like, what happens when the king finds, like the king saw you use the tinderbox. So like, what happens if the king gets a hold of the tinderbox? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I- There's a party at the end where all the dogs get really drunk. What if <laughs> while the dogs are drunk, they came up and stabbed you? <laughs> Like, I know this is nitpicking, but it's just, like, so vague, you can't help. And you've seen so many movies like this where, like, the wish-making is This guy is, is the bad guy. Yeah, and he's not a good guy anyway, so like it's this, fun to make fun of him. This is all just, like, the setup for a new hero to come in and save the kingdom from this evil guy that came in with a magic box and, like, terrorized the kingdom to get his way. <laughs> like, this guy is not the hero. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's the Tinderbox's story. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not think it was, how you say, very good. I thought the animation itself was pretty good for a country that we've never seen animation from before. And, like, it's not, it's obviously not to the level that Disney is producing at this point. But mm -hmm. that's, that's neither here nor there. I think it's still pretty well done. It gets real weird looking at a few times. The biggest problem with the animation, and I couldn't find anything to confirm this, but I think it's because the animators probably could not um, double check their animation. Like mm -hmm. they probably did not have like a sweat box situation they where they could mm -hmm. like review their shots. There's a lot of times where there's just way too many frames for something. And so the animation is very slow. Um, so the, the timing is all off. That's the biggest problem with the animation, but other than that, it is pretty well animated for the time period that it came out. And as you probably could have tell from seeing the clips here, it's very much so inspired by Fleischer Bros style of animation. But there's also several things that are very Disney-esque. Mm -hmm. the, the way our main character is drawn is more Disney, is more of that like, Traditional rotoscoping type Rotoscopo, model. he's a pretty human looking character and most of the other characters are cartoons. Yeah, and cartoons and the like Fleischer bro, um, Gulliver's Travels mm -hmm. type sense. The, the background artwork has definitely some aspirations to emulate some of that like Disney cinematography as well. There's a couple of shots in particular where it's like they're really experimenting with trying to uh, 
move the camera around in a 3D space on a, on a 2D surface. Mm -hmm. So some parallaxing, stuff like that, which looks pretty good. Like they do, they have a couple of really good shots, especially at the beginning. Yeah. Overall though, I think that this is another prime example and we've been seeing these steadily throughout AP where people want to take and adapt a fairy tale and especially with Hans Christian Andersen fairy tales, they adapt it very... Literally? Literally. Uh, and no matter don't, the time period that they're Yeah, and don't take to. a whole lot of liberties with it. And I think that just makes for a bad film. Because for starters, you do just kind of need to change things for modern sensibilities. And even in 1946, I think this would not necessarily be up to modern sensibility standards. But on top of that, books are not movies. Movies are not books. When you translate a book to a movie, like you need to make some changes and make some changes to the pacing and the story and ask like, well, why do we have this in here? And how does that visually in a film work to make the whole story better. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's where, that's where this movie kind of falls apart, but I don't want to nitpick it too much because it is the first from Denmark, from Denmark. So it's okay. For you guys. Yeah. It's, it's interesting enough. I kind of recommend it, but not like with gusto. Yeah. It isn't, it is a product of its time, and it is interesting for that sake. I wouldn't take life lessons from it, though. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely not. Anyway, uh, this film was directed by Sven Methling, who was an actor and director uh, in his home country of Denmark. More important to note, I think, is one of the animators, I think the lead animator on this film, was Bjorg Ring. And... Again, I'm probably saying that incorrectly. His name has an O with the slash through that, and I have no idea what kind of sound that makes. Yeah, we're really bad at European. <laughs> Any European language that is not English, and even half the time English, uh, we don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> anyway, though, this guy is pretty well known in the field of animation. He has a short called Anna and Bella from 1984 mm. that won an Academy Award for Best Short. Well, we might watch that once we get there. So, uh, yeah, I definitely think we're going to put that on our list for shorts to watch. He was also a musician. He uh, worked on this film, and then he started his own studio in Copenhagen. Then, uh, at some point, moved to the Netherlands to work at Tunder Studios. And then moved to London to work with Disney by 1973. Okay. He's worked on shorts like uh, It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. He worked on one of the openings for the Pink Panther movies. He's also worked on Heavy Metal, which is a film we haven't watched yet in AP, but it'll be another... So he gets around. Ralph Bakshi film. And We're Back, A Dinosaur Story. Oh, yay! <laughs> He was awarded the Danish Animation Society Award and the Windsor McKay Award in the same year, which I think was like 2012. So, and Windsor McKay Awards are usually, like, like that's how you know somebody really stuck out in the field of animation, at least um, here in the West. And then uh, he, he's actually only died recently. He died December of 2018, at the age oh. of 97. Well, he lived a long and sounds like fairly eventful life. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was necessarily a prosperous one, but like, <laughs> because he's an animator and unfortunately animators don't necessarily make a lot of money, but at least yeah. he lived a long life. Mm-hmm. And got like a lot of work and worked on some pretty cool projects. Well, good for him. Yeah. I think that's going to be it for this episode, though. So mm -hmm. join us back here next time. If you're watching in chronological order, we are moving on to 1947 with more Disney. <laughs> uh, but if you're watching these as they are coming out, we are moving on to another catch-up film from the year of 1970. 
So see you there, whichever way you're going. Yeah. See you then. Bye-bye.